<laughs> I need like a streamer character name. This is crazy. Whoa. What the heck happened? We sort of made a major mistake. Today, we're preparing our land. Off-grid campsite. Right back there. Can you believe it? I've never done anything like this before. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since. And now, after moving from the USA to Portugal, we'll be documenting our entire journey of building our dreams as we transform a historic water mill into our first home, not on wheels. Join us as we embark on this new and exciting phase of life. Now, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Welcome back to another episode here in Portugal. We last left you explaining why we don't yet have the keys to our water mill ruin that over the next few years, we will be transforming and renovating into our home. So for now, Drew and I have been working the land, the 6.8 hectares that we do own, preparing the spot behind me for our camper, where we're gonna be living off grid while the renovation works take place. But this is something that we've never done before. Drew and I have been nomads for the past eight years. We're first time land owners, Owners. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> it's taken us about four hard days of labor to get it almost level, but today we have to get it perfectly level because tomorrow we have a huge, huge delivery coming here. But before we go there, let's share with you what happened the very first days of working on our land. Like meeting our neighbor who owns the little citrus grove at the far end of our property. Depois, aqui, uh, e. esta chimanto, sim, a uh, camping car. Oh, aqui. okay, yeah. bom trabalho. Oh, vizinho. <laughs> vizinho, sim, sim. Pronto, no. adeus. Nice to meet you. Adeus. Até logo. Até logo. Drew e Brittany. Isa, okay, yeah. okay meeting our neighbors right now. Look, he brought us oranges from the little grove. I love him already. Me too. Look at my new get up right now. Look at us. I look cleaner than I think I'll ever look in the future. Day one. When it came to figuring out or guessing what tools to start with, this is what we got. Flat shovel, pointy shovel, rake, one pickaxe. This is crazy. Whoa. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. Yeah. Hey yeah. Sledgehammer, clippers, hard rake, hoe. Who are you calling a hoe? Nobody's a hoe around here. <laughs> Just want to say this is way more effective than the rake I've been using for the past four days. That's the hoe. Aw, hoe's a hard worker. <laughs> You know, having the right tools makes the job that much easier. A lot of you guys have told us in the comments, don't cheap out, get the right tools. It'll make your lives that much better. Well, we in fact are finding that out right now. Tool of choice right now. I also want to point out how alive our soil is. I feel bad because there's like little earthworms and spiders that we're displacing for the time being. But in the end, they will be happier having us around, I think. <laughs> hey, Mr. Grub, look at him. Wow, you want to find a new home? Wheelbarrow. And last but not least. <laughs> Drew's new best friend. Oh my goodness. I need like a streamer character name. If you guys have an idea, leave a comment below. Tell me what I should call myself when I'm in uniform. <laughs> Ooh. So, clear the grass, sort out the rocks, level the dirt, something like that. Do a little jig. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so I think I just did it. I took off the string line and put on the circular blade. That's a straight up skill saw on the end of the strimmer. That's going to cut some serious bush. That bush, that bush and that bush right there. They're all coming down. One thing I made sure to do is take my phone and put a manual for it in English. That way I knew how to do this properly.
Wow. Wow. Never done that before. <laughs> when we arrived this morning, before we started excavating and trimming away, Drew and I had a moment with our land where we greeted it with love and we told it, don't worry, we're here to restore you. We are not destroying you. We're here to be friends. We're gonna get to know each other really well. And it's pretty crazy to see the fruits of our labor already after day one. If you're wondering the method behind our madness here, our future camping spot was low in the back, low on the right, but high in the middle. It was all sorts of weird. So we're just trying to redistribute the earth and trim the areas around it. Watch this. It's like clay. Yeah. It's heavy. It's heavy. Super compacted. Yeah. I also want to say how amazing it feels to be able to focus our attention on one thing. To be able to pour our energy and our thoughts into loving this land. And sure, it's a tough terrain to sort of dig my way through, but I'm enjoying this. And once you get the hang of it, I could do this for hours until my muscles give out and I'm so ready to go home. Hard work is fun. Work hard, play hard, work harder, play harder, you know. Oh my goodness, guys. I've been at this probably for an hour and a half now. Oh my gosh, it sounds crazy to turn the, turn the machine off and hear quiet. I'm sweating like an absolute animal out here. Feels good to be cleaning up this road though. It's some good progress over here. This thing's trusty old pal right here. Wonder how Brittany's doing. Little girl doing big things. Gonna have to do that a few hundred more times. Time to get level. This is our method of compacting our dirt to see how level we got everything, at least so far. Good work, partner. <laughs> this is fun. It's great. This is one of the curves in the road that's really bumpy that we're gonna hope the gravel trucks will be able to level out. It's gonna be interesting watching a huge truck make its way down this. It's been tricky knowing where to start with this whole project, but we figured getting us a level spot, smoothing out our road that we drive down every single day, down and up, was a perfect place to start. One day at a time, one project, one scoop of gravel or dirt, just, you know, trying not to get overwhelmed and enjoy the process, which we are, and that's what's most important. And there's our future home is where you park it spot. It's gonna look a whole lot better by the end of today. Eating oranges from our neighbor. No pesticides, no nothing. Uh, ready for this? Look how juicy that thing is. That wasn't the cleanest peel job. <laughs> it was effective. How much do you want a tool shed right now? So, so bad, but this, has been absolutely essential. And today, in fact, we've hauled our first big objects on the roof, so. Oh, tubes. I don't know how we would have done that had we had like only a back bed part without that support up there, so. That's true. Time to put on your dancing shoes. Dancing shoes. Oh, they're still wet. Gross. Cold. So now that we've got our parking spot flattened, I'm gonna build a French drain underneath the parking spot. We wanna make sure that a puddle doesn't accumulate when it rains and allow any excess moisture drainage. We gotta dig a trench. Right now, I have all the pipe laid out. I might draw a line so I know where to dig my trench. Hopefully my line's straight. So as you can see, we got the pipe down in the trench. We wish we could have got our trench a little deeper, but I'm gonna tell you, this is a lot of work doing this by hand. Yeah. 
We got it probably about 12 inches down in. We're gonna get some gravel and then fill it all back in and create a proper French drain. We wanted to go with a bigger diameter tube, but we just felt like if we had too much pressure on top of it and not deep enough, it, it could have cracked or could break. Yeah. This will be our future guest parking home. It will, for future van life friends. A reoccurring theme for us throughout these beginning days is how much of a difference having the right tools makes in getting a job done, which is why we're excited to share with you the sponsor of today's episode, The Hood To Go by Sierra. This mini but mighty portable range hood makes it easy to cook wherever your adventures take you, removing odors and absorbing grease with its highly efficient motor, which is nice and quiet too. It's beautifully designed and made entirely from recycled environmentally friendly ABS materials, which are super durable and the large oil collecting cup is so easy to clean and the magical trio filtration system is magnetically attached, making it easy to access the polymer and aluminum filters all of which protect you and whoever or whatever you're cooking near from harmful cooking fumes and grease. You simply plug it in, turn it on, choose one of the two speed levels, and voila! If you're interested or know someone who might love trying out the hood to go, click on the link in our video description below to get your early bird promo code. Plus, you can explore more about how Sierra is making efforts towards their mission of sustainability, something we're always happy to hear companies moving towards these days. It's a beautiful morning. Perfect day to get gravel. Got our coffees. Cheers. Last night, I got a tick in my boot, which reminds all of us adventurers, make sure you have a first aid kit on hand. I'm gonna put duct tape on it. No guys like ripping their leg hairs. Or girls. Or girls. Back <laughs> in my boot. So the other day I ordered 500 euros worth of gravel and that's eight cubic meters. I have no idea what that's gonna look like, but each truck comes with an 85 dollar, 85 euro delivery fee. All I knew is we we're gonna maximize each truck and order the most we could. There he is. I wonder what he's thinking. He's thinking those are some bumpy washouts in this road. We need to get that repaired. Good thing I'm here to save the day. <laughs> Who knew gravel could be so exciting? We just need to put a little bit into the trench. I wish we could have went deeper, but you know with hand it's so much work. You have a... Uh, yeah, shovel. Put a little bit and don't smash the, the pipe. Also, Hugo advised Drew to drill some holes in the tops of our French pipe so that the water can get down into the pipe and then flow out through the holes that he already drilled through the bottoms of the pipes. And we're only putting gravel on top. We're not putting cloth around it. Um, that's how they said that they do it here. So we're following the professionals. The locals know best. It's all happening. You know, you just gotta start somewhere. And we started right here in this spot. This is class two, one inch pieces. It's really nice, it has like a tan pinkish color. You guys want to know what? That's only half the load. There's another truck coming for our curve up there. Surprise! Wow. <laughs> that was only four cubic meters here. I go pick the other loads. Perfect. Then we'll, we'll meet you the, up there. The first uh, yeah, yeah, deliver. Okay. It's in there. It's maybe in put one, two, three, or four. We're happy okay. with this. It looks great. More than 30 yeah, minutes, yeah. I'm, I'm we'll, here again. And then we'll come. When we hear you, we'll come up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just like the look of the white stone. Kind of looks like a giant litter box to me, but. <laughs> no peeing on the rock. <laughs> That's right. So we sort of made a major mistake. We shouldn't have ever had him dump a load right here because now we need it in the back. 
You live and you learn. There were a lot of things happening at once. Decisions were being made. A huge back end of a truck was being flipped up into the air. <laughs> I just want to say it was really hard to determine how much was going to fall at once. Sometimes when it hit a certain pitch, it just all wanted to like flow like a gushing waterfall. Yeah, there was like a perfect balance yeah. of how far it had to lift and how much rock would come out. And like I said before, we didn't really know what four cubic meters of gravel would look like. So how much did we put in the front, the back, all around? I think we did all right. We did pretty good for our first time. We figured it out. We'll do better with the second truck. Yeah, that's right. There's another one. I hear the beeping of the truck. That means Hugo is back with the second delivery and it's a different size gravel made for this specific kind of situation. Wow, it is a lot finer. One thing he told me is the truck can't be too unlevel when it's lifting or it could tip over. So he's really cautious about that. Whoa. Whoa. Pile number four. We thought that we would only be able to smooth out the bend in the road, but Drew's all the way up there, like by the main road, making our whole road better. That right there, that's our last bit of gravel for the day. Let's go, we got work to do. Part of why smoothing out this road is so important for the obvious reasons, being able to drive down it just more easily. It's pretty crucial for us being able to get a Spiri 2 down the road and back up out of the road, especially because this gravel is supposed to be for more grippiness. We decided it would be smart to build somewhat of a retaining wall slash gutter. Ow! <laughs> My thumb. Because the water will likely come this way and that's probably why this road was washed out so badly. So we figure if we build up some rocks, the water will be able to pass and hopefully the rocks will hold in all of this good stuff. Luckily we don't have a shortage of rocks around here. Ooh! And Drew made me a whole wheelbarrow. Beep! Beep, beep. <laughs> kind of good to fit them together a little bit so they kind of help each other out. Wow, babe, it looks great. You didn't even plan to do that. That's a really good idea you had. It's transforming. This is only the beginning. It's just the road. And our camping spot is in a nice location so that we'll be out of the way of any major works that need to be happening at the water mill. So we're tucked in a nice level corner. What the future might bring What the future might bring What the heck happened? Siesta <laughs> You've had enough? I can't do it anymore <laughs> I like your bucket method I'm just trying to relocate the gravel A little too thick over here To our bald corner I didn't want to use the rake or the hoe anymore. A few more buckets. <sighs> You're so dusty and white. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ready for this? Oh, right on my toe. <laughs> Final step for the day. Just blending in our bright white gravel with a little bit of dirt. What a day. Moment of truth. Is she level? Wait, but we're too close to the edge. We gotta go up there. Pretend that you're a Spiri too. <laughs> Where are we gonna park the camper? Look at that. Perfectly level. No way. That's really impressive. <sighs> I nice. like what I see. Job well done. Good work. Oh, you're fist pump. Okay. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling totally spent after today. We got started at 8 a.m. and it's now after 5. All I want to do is drive out of our smooth road, but I do have to say, I think we did a pretty good job just 
picking a place to start with this project and prioritizing a level place to sleep hopefully soon and smooth out the road so our camper can come down and back out safely. In our coming episodes, we're gonna have to figure out water, power, and Wi-Fi. So stay tuned. How excited are you to drive out of our smooth road? I think I might be so excited that I might do it once or twice. <laughs> Just to help pack it down. <laughs> Maybe three or four, we'll see. I'm ready. You gonna pack the tools? I can gather them, yes. All right, teamwork makes the dream work. That's right, and this is our tool shed, remember. <laughs> Soon enough, we'll have the keys to the water mill, but for now, we got a happy little place to call home up here. I hold my breath, waiting for someone to knock at my door. I think that was a total success. Wow, that was smooth. Job well done, guys. Thank you for joining us today. We enjoyed having you.